Hello and welcome to our ninth conversation to connect. Let's get real, powered by Exceptional Connections. I'm Cindy O'Neill Dady, the founder and chief connector of Exceptional Connections since 2009. At Exceptional Connections, we offer intentional and innovative solutions to boost your business. Each week, I nominate a different member of our Exceptional Connections community to have a, a meaningful conversation with. So be sure to make yourself comfortable with a cup of tea or a beverage of your choice and um, get ready to take notes, add comments and questions in the chat box to engage with us during our conversation. So around the 45 minute or one hour mark, I'll unmute the lines and invite our listeners to ask questions, share their ahas, epiphanies, and enter into our thought provoking conversation. So the inspiration of our weekly conversations to connect Let's Get Real Talks is to create purposeful conversations. So we desire to be relevant, relevant during these challenging and uncertain times and to support our community to make an impact in the world and to stay connected. So our conversation to connect this week is with Chuck Oxford from Woodenville, Washington. His topic today is there's no future in your past. So before I bring Chuck on with us, it's my pleasure to share with him, share with you some background um, about him and his journey. So Chuck Oxford is the founder of Charles Oxford Consulting. So as a small business consultant, he supports small business owners and their organizations to gain clarity on aligning and integrating best practices with performance. He supports his clients to turn their dreams into reality by connecting purpose and strengths to accelerate growth and market impact. Chuck brings 20 years of corporate management experience and 13 years of small business ownership to benefit his clients, challenging their current mid mindset to embrace change and think big. Chuck is passionate about supporting his clients to tap into their genius. We are honored to have Chuck share some thoughts from his upcoming book, There Is No Future in the Past. And Chuck is also a valued and trusted member of our Exceptional Connections leadership team. Um, we just are so thankful to have him be part of our mentor connector and a former spotlight speaker. So without further ado, I want to turn things over to Chuck and welcome you to, welcome you to the call, Chuck. Yeah, thank you for having me here. It's an honor to be here and to, you know, share some thoughts and information that I've gathered over the last few years while uh, in the process of writing my book, There's No Future in Your Past. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. So before we get going here, share with us a little bit about your inspiration for writing this book and, you know, in the context of the times we live in right now. Yeah, I, I, the uh, inspiration for this book was a number of incidents that really happened back in our uh, last recession of 07, 8, 9, 10, and um, how people really were clinging to their past as the world around them was basically coming apart on them. And they stuck to who they were, not who they were in the moment, in the present. So I always go, I think about this story that really inspired me. A friend of mine was a $250,000 a year salesperson. And uh, during the recession, I believe it was in 09, he got laid off and was replaced by a, a younger man. He had been with the company 25 years and the younger man had been maybe five years. And they replaced him. And this gentleman made about $85,000 a year. And... Uh, so my friend, uh, of course, was in need of another job. So he went out and he was telling everybody, well, I'm a $250,000 a year salesperson with 25 years experience. And he was having a lot of difficulty uh, finding a job because he was clinging to the past and what was happening around him no longer existed. It only existed in the past. And he clung to this with gripped hands, you know? So he would go out to interviews and say, I'm a $250,000 a year salesman with 25 years experience. But the problem was the reality around him was 
companies were hiring people in his same field of sales for 85,000 and they were bringing in people with less experience. So he just clung to that story for, I think he was unemployed for three, four, five years because he kept clinging to this story. And it was really a shame. And so it inspired me because I met other people doing similar things, clinging to what they were when the reality around them had changed and they were not embracing the change around them. Wow. Well, yes, your story beautifully illustrates how holding on to the past doesn't serve us, right? We need to be able to adapt. So can you share with us um, just briefly, you know, the context of the turbulent times we're in right now and how, you know, how that's inspired you to really pull out your manuscript and, and take a look at, you know, your thoughts that you've had in the past in the context of what's going on right now? Yeah, as, as we know, these are, these are turbulent times. We have lots of challenges around us. But at the same time, there are beneficial aspects and there are opportunities abound. So we have to be sure that we're not clinging to the past and missing the opportunities that are in front of our faces right now. So I view this pause in our everyday lives and our society creates a space where we can transform and elevate and inspire ourselves to move forward in the life that we really want instead of the one that currently exists. You know, we can discover ourselves, we, we can disconnect ourselves from the past so we can be free to rethink the possibilities and of achievement, you know, beyond what we're currently thinking and, and what are what are the current possibilities. So we, we need to connect with the opportunities for achieving personal growth, finding fulfillment in our lives, and increasing our self-esteem during these times that uh, there were, there's a lot of gloom and doom floating around. So I believe that difficult times have historically presented immense opportunities to mm -hmm. reset ourselves and reconnect with our passion. I think you know we hear these stories about famous people and writers from the past doing awesome sets of work while they've been in prison or they've been in wars or they've been in plagues. So I think that now we have a, an opportunity, a historic opportunity to really find out who we are and what we can really do. So the past is an important learning experience, but we must realize that we do not live there anymore. We live in the present and we're moving to the future. So do not sit idle and let your future uh, go into somebody else's hands. Take control and be intentional. Oh, my goodness. That's beautiful. And that really sets the stage for our talk today. And to be able to move forward, um, you know, we, we talked about um, the importance of accepting and letting go of the past. So share with us some illustrations that you and I talked about um, in, you know, in terms of that concept. Well, you know, one of the things that I like to do is uh, quote Maya Angelou. Uh, and I think these times are appropriate. I did then what I knew best. Now I know better. I do better. Mm, so true. And so now we, we have to, you know, we have to come to grips that, um, that we're, we're in danger of dragging with us kind of the heavyweights, the boulders of the past. And we need to break those boulders down so we're not using all our energy and all our focus on dragging them around and slowing us down. Because we need all the energy we've got to face the future. Yeah, that's a great reminder. For me, I, I have a visual of a, like a ball and chain, but the boulder yeah. is a great one. Um, well, the boulder we can break down. You know, you can, you can hammer it apart and make right. it little pieces so they don't hold us back. Right. More manageable. Yeah, we can step over them. So what effects do limiting beliefs have on us as we're, you know, letting go, you know, accepting the past, dealing with it to, in, or, or in order to move forward? Well, I think that we, we need to embrace the concept that the past is gone. The past is simply reference material, like a library. It's a library of experience. And that 
we don't need we don't need it doesn't require any energy to exist and we shouldn't spend any energy on the past because the, the as i said the future requires everything we've got so the vision of our lives is often viewed unfortunately through the lens of the past which is kind of like looking at a telescope from the wrong end you know from the big end and looking through it and it 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 makes us think small and we, we can't be thinking small, we've got to think big, because the bigger we think, the bigger space we're going to fill in the future. And so often, because people do this, you know, we, freak, we frequently think smaller than our true destiny is in the future, because it can be as big as we want. Right. So the more possibilities that are available, the bigger we think, right? Yes. And it well, reminds me The more possibilities of we think of, the bigger it is, yeah. Okay, yes. And, and so I'm, I don't know, I have this visual here of um, Jurassic Park when they had the, the rear view mirror, right? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. we don't want to be looking at, we don't want to be looking around, we don't want to be looking back, we don't want to be looking at the rear view mirror. We want to be looking forward in a, and thinking big, like you said, in order to really be effective and, and be able to be present. Yeah. Um, so share with us some stories about limiting beliefs and um, you have an analogy with shadows that I, I think your, our listeners would love to hear about. Yeah, uh, stories from the past and limiting beliefs, to me, I view them like shadows, like sh shadows across the road uh, that exist from your past and they, they bring shade and darkness into our present thinking. Mm -hmm. So I, I look at it kind of like, you know, like the, a, a completely open, clear blue sky is all the possibilities. But when you have a partly cloudy day, the clouds that you see, you can still see blue sky. But what happens is the clouds block part of the blue sky, just like stories and limiting beliefs in the past. So you don't see the, all the possibilities of, of that is, the blue sky offers us. So it's a, I view the blue sky as just a clear path, and the clouds are just blocking it. The blue sky is still there, right. but our limiting beliefs keep us from seeing the complete blue sky. That's a beautiful visual. I, I agree with you. And it reminds me of my landmark days when they say that which you resist persists. So, you know, you, you don't want to resist that the clouds are there, but just know that the possibilities of the blue sky, like you say, are behind it. Um, that, you know, sometimes we get stuck just seeing the shadows, like you say, just seeing the clouds and we don't, we forget what's behind that, right? We forget what, right. what's possible. Yeah. Cause the clouds block our view of the sun. So we view it as a cloudy day when actually the sun is shining and there's a blue sky. Right. So our limiting beliefs do that. They blind us. They, That's you know, beautiful. They and that, yeah. Belief. It's a great analogy. I hadn't thought of that before, but I, I love that. Um, so, so we've accepted our past. We're dealing with, um, with it, and it's critical. We know that, as you mentioned, to moving forward. So how can we reframe our story so that we can move forward? Yeah, I think in reframing our story, I, I, like, the, uh, I, I like to uh, point out that Often when we're dealing with the past and we're living in the present, we're living in our comfort zone, what's easy for us. But uh, the saying I like is a comfort zone is a beautiful place. It's a comforting place, but nothing grows there. There's no growth. There's no moving forward. Yes. There's no bigger you there. So, to re so I think to reframe our story, it's really important to cut the cord from the past. Let it go no matter how painful the past might have been or how great it is, it's not there anymore. So you need to embrace a new beginning, a new path to the future. And it's, so it's time to let go of our limiting beliefs, you know, and, uh, you know, create a guiding light for ourselves to move from, you know, kind of move from where we are today to uh, where we really want to be in the future, to have a better future than today, because that's what we all hope for. Right. So where we want to be and who we want to be, right? Yes. Now's the time. Right. Because 
what you got you here today is not likely going to get you where you need to go tomorrow because the rules of the past won't be the rules of the future because right. the future is a, is, is a total blank. It's not, it doesn't exist yet. You write the story, you know? So today in the present, especially with the coronavirus situation we're in today, I think it's a time where there's a shift that we can take advantage of if we just pause that so that we can, this pause can allow us to transform and, and elevate and inspire ourselves to, to be better and look to the future and say, the future is whatever we make it. Right. So every day we, we change every day's experience. We're different than yesterday. We're different than last week in subtle ways. So every day we have the opportunity to become a better version of ourselves. Yeah, no, that's, that's really true. I, um, I love a quote by Nito Quibin that you shared with me. Um, I feel like it kind of sums up what you just said. So your present circumstances do not determine where you can go. They yeah. merely determine where you start. So this serves as a perfect segue to our next paradigm shift. Um, on how to handle your present circumstances with resilience. So share with us more about that. Yeah. Uh, so in, in difficult times, there's challenges as well as opportunities. So there's doom and gloom with some people, but there's silver linings with other people. So the way I look at it is uh, to be positive is today's troubles and issues are just a passage to the future, things we have to work through to get to the future. So it's not a place to stay or dwell in because that, that provides limiting beliefs for ourselves. Right. So I'll, I'll, it's important to take time to mourn our losses at this time, but mourning our losses is not a sign of weakness as long as we don't stay there. But it's an important opportunity to reposition our mindsets for, for clarity of vision, see where we, where we go, what we really want. It's a pause in our lives so that we can reflect and gain clarity. You know, have a little time out, maybe a little silence, a little pause, so that we can reposition ourselves to move forward. And realize that the current events and circumstances are, are really temporary and not, that does not predestine or determine our future. There's no way, because we're gonna write the future, it doesn't exist. So we're only gonna carry forward the things that we drag from the past. Things that, you know, we're, we're just imagining these things because they don't really exist anymore. So I encourage people to embrace change. And when I say embrace change, I think I like them to think about, I need to change because you know, I want a better life. I am able to change because there's no rules and there's no limits to the future. And that they believe that change will benefit you because you can build a more fulfilling, higher quality and more successful life with no rules and no dragging limiting beliefs to the future. So there's no, there's really is no win or lose in the present just rethinking where you want to go and who you want to be. So just creating the moment to the momentum to uh, build, build a pipeline to distribute our values and messages into the world around us. I think that's what we should be thinking of. How do we get that pipeline, that road, that path to the best vision of our future? And really that requires being present, right? Staying where you're staying in the present moment and not, not looking back into the past and not dragging, like you say, you know, things into the future. I think that's, that's important for us to remember, especially in these times. Yeah, exactly. So, cause what we do in the present matters it may not seem like it, but it does because if we take intentional action and plan today, it sets up the future for success so that we we're not a boat without a rudder and a compass that we actually are intentional and that we make the first step and we do move forward and in, in, into the future right. there's no other choice 
Before we move on, I want to just reflect on something that you said that I think is so important that, you know, not only is it okay to mourn or, you know, like be still in the present moment, but also I think it's so important to be able to take stock of where we're at and the way that we can shift things, the possibilities that are available to us, especially in this time of um, shelter in place. And there's, there's so many things that have changed. And if we don't change with it, we're going to get be left behind, right? Yeah, that's right. The and train's gonna that, run you over. That's, that's something that's been very sobering for me to just you know keep on moving, keep on swimming, <laughs> as Dory said. Um, so to summarize, you know, the three paradigm shifts you shared so far is accepting your past, reframing your story, handle your present circumstances with resilience, and the importance in the midst of that of tending to your mindset to set you up for success. So um, we step into the future in a way that creates momentum, right? Positive momentum. And I remember a couple of years ago, that was your word for the year, momentum. Yes, and exactly. We talked about, you know, the power of, of having like the wind at your back, right? The power of being in action and, and being moving. So, you know, whenever this season of COVID season ends, for those who are listening to this later, um, this is May uh, 2020, um, you know, we'll be ready. We'll be, we'll be in motion at that time. So... Talk to us about this next kind of piece of your paradigm that, you know, as we're stepping into the future. Yeah. Uh, the way I view the future is that the future is a blank slate. There's no rules, no negativity, no limits for success. It's as big as you want to make it. And I encourage people to think big. So uh, I have a saying that I like to follow too with John Maxwell, who's a great teacher and mentor to people. You don't overcome challenges by making them small, but by making yourself bigger. And uh, I think that's really important because that's what I think people should do. Make sure you think of yourself bigger and bolder in the future. So when I think of blank slates, uh, I think about uh, this will date me, but I think about the nice clean chalkboard, the green or the black chalkboard at school on Monday morning. That on Monday morning, the, the, when you first arrive at school, at least in the old days, <laughs> you would have a nice, all the chalkboards would be clean, not a mark on them. There's nothing on them. So you have a complete blank slate for the week, just like we do for the future. So, uh, and that's kind of the way I view the future, because there's no rules and no limits, except the, the ones that we drag from the past and the stories that we cling to. So I want people to really think about that. It's a blank slate. The road isn't built yet. The path isn't built. You yes. need to be intentional and build that road for yourself. And don't wait for people. So Preach it, Chuck. Preach it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe in this. So I know. I can tell. Yeah, past formulas uh, won't, won't likely get you to the future because those worked in the past, but the future rules and formulas don't exist yet. So past formulas also uh, won't drive you and fulfill your vision of where you want to be in the future and what your, what your future wants to be or what you want your future to be. So your present circumstances don't determine where your future lies. They only determine where you start, where you are in the present. Because again, reentering, the future is a blank slate. So I want people to really think hard about developing a plan of action uh, to move you into the future. Create actionable goals. Mm, beautiful. So I love your simile of the future being like a blank slate, you know, and again, we're both dating ourselves because that's the visual I have as well of the blackboard. Um, mm -hmm. Then later when I was a teacher, it was a whiteboard and now I guess it's a computer, but um, it's a beautiful visual to create a positive, you know, kind of visual or scenario for the future. Um, I love this quote by Seth Godin, 
um, learn to embrace a blank slate. So that's, you know, really supporting what you, the visual you just yeah. shared. Right? Yes, that's a good one. So, um, so you mentioned the importance of developing a plan of action to move us into the future. So we're moving along here, and I love this because this is the this is where the rubber meets the road, right? Yeah. Um, so this is where we're, you know, tell us more about this plan for the future. Yeah. Uh, again, I like to uh, another quote by Malcolm Forbes. I think is so uh, important in in this topic, this particular shift. The biggest mistake people make is not trying to make a living at something they enjoy. Because, you know, most, I, th there's a statistic out there that at least a third of the people out there in their jobs are not engaged. They don't like them. They don't care about them. And that's a shame. It because is. you're wasting all your talent and energy and your youth. So I, I suggest that people create a plan for the future. Do something, think through, where is it you really want to be? So, so it's, to me, it's just like when we take a trip, you need to know where we're going and how to get there. So you got to plan out where you want to be. What is, what is your view of the future? What would you really want to be? Because you can, you know, there's no rules. So you can change everything. You write the script. You write your own movie. So, and I think intentional action, actually doing something uh, and planning dissipates fear and paralysis uh, about moving to the future and, 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 you know, diminishes procrastination because as we write it, as difficult as it might be visioning the future, you, you, you once you see where the road may go and you intentional about going down the road and paving that road, then there's less fear because you know where you want to go. So, because without action, you cannot take advantage of opportunities that, that come up. Because if you take action and you're moving down the road, you're going to encounter opportunities. Standing still, the opportunities have to come to you. But if you're moving forward, you're going toward the opportunities. And opportunities are never lost. But if you don't get out there and take action, then someone else is going to bump into those opportunities and you're going to miss out because they're going to take them because you won't be there to take them. So uh, I'd say to uh, discover also, you know, what are you good at? Discover it. What are you really good at? Take the time to really assess yourself. What, what do you really like? What are you really good at? And that should provide you direction on where your future uh, may lie. Find your passion and what excites you, what inspires you to take action, what makes you get out of bed in the morning, you know, and, and put that with what your strengths are and what you're good at, and you'll start getting direction. You know, assess your skills, resources, and commitment to the future. And I really want to put emphasis on the commitment, because we can all write a nice story and tell a nice story, but are we truly committed to doing what it takes to achieve that dream you have of the future? So you need to develop a, uh, a set of actionable goals, you know, really big, hairy, audacious goals. You know, mm -hmm. they should scare you. If they don't mm -hmm. scare you, they're not big enough. Right. Because it won't, it won't inspire you to take action. And it will test your commitment. So, so I want people to also think about that life is a journey. It's not a target. So when, because when you get there, you have these goals. And if you achieve there, what you're going to find out is you've come to a, a new height and you're going to look out and there's going to be new heights. It's like climbing paths in the mountains. You're going to get to the top of the mountain. You're going to see other mountains. So, and then you're going to see other mountains. So it's always a moving target. So you never get there. You're always navigating the future because there's no destination. It's always a moving target. And so I suggest that when you're making your action, your intentional actions and your goals, that you focus on really making a difference in the world. 
just don't listen to other people's opinions because they'll likely make you mediocre. So you need to focus on making a difference and creating impact in the communities in the world around you for your, you know, for yourself, because that's going to make you the best self you can be. So I want to leave it this, this part with, I think the most critical question you should ask yourself, am I really committed to do what it really takes to achieve success as I planned? Because that's the hard part. You've got to really be committed and have faith in yourself and believe in yourself. Oh my goodness. So this reminds me of the story of the early Spanish explorers. I think it was Cortez who in, um, as I remember in my history, Veracruz, Mexico, they landed and they, he burned the ships, right? Mm -hmm. They burned the ships and the sailors were like, wow, what are you doing? You know? So, you know, thereby creating total commitment. So that's a little, you know, that's a big, <laughs> that's, that's one end of the spectrum in terms of a commitment. Um, but they were, you know, basically in doing that, they're closing off options um, for retreating, going back, giving up. Right. So I love your illustration because that's, that's the strength of a commitment that you need to make to yourself, that we need to make to ourselves, right? Yes, exactly. It's like there's, you know, and there's, there's different people that say that, like they'll, if they want to write a book or whatever they, and I know I did that for myself as well. When I was transitioning from being a homeschool mom to, you know, my next move, career move, um, you know, I cut the cord. I had to do that. And, and it found, I found that it made all the difference for me. I mean, I had a plan B, but um, having a, a, making a commitment to your desired destination is so important. So I love that. Thank you for flushing out that analogy and, and being able to really help us to see how important that was. Well, I think too that it takes courage to be intentional about your future and what you're going yes. to do and the action and goals. It takes courage. It does. You know, and so uh, I think it's important for you to share, Chuck, you, you shared with when we were talking about this, um, what happens if you don't, right? Yeah. Well, let me say this, you know, one piece of advice that uh, I picked up and learned the hard way in my life is if you don't have the courage to build your dreams, someone will hire you to build their dreams with your skills, energies, and talent. Mm -hmm. And you give them everything you've got. Right. And they fulfill their dreams and you're taking a back seat. You're diminishing yourself. And I've learned that the hard way during my lifetime. Wow. That's a sobering thought, but you know, it's one that can motivate and inspire us too, right? Yeah. <laughs> to absolutely. do our, you know, to be able to follow our heart and our heart's desire. Um, mm -hmm. So now that we have a plan or a set of, you know, we've set a plan for the future, how can we face the future with confidence? Well, I like to start this because we, you do need to be confident about the future. It's going to be here. It's going to be as great as you want it to be. So I like this quote from Steve Jobs from Apple. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' of pe people's opinion drown out your own inner voice. And the important thing here is to have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. So don't diminish yourself. Yes. Be bold. I love it. So, so um, I, I advise you, don't let other, others' opinions control you. And I think, you know, we're all guilty of this in some part of our life. People's opinions focus on where they are at, not where you are at, and where they think you should be, not where you need to be. So Where you are, right? Or where you are, <laughs> yes. So... No one has the skills or capabilities or passions that you do. You know, again, a collaborate with others manifests itself so you can show up 
or so people can show up to support your ideas and efforts, but it's collaboration, yes. not giving away your soul. So you, you, you really, because studies show that it, you really need a team to uh, scale your life and inspire you to do better because you can, the exchange of ideas is very powerful. So I suggest that you let go of your limiting beliefs that you've dragged along from the past. They are a distraction and are draining your energy. It's time to really claim your life. We're in this pause, historical pause in our country and our lives and in the world. So now's the time to really reflect and have that mind shift about yourself. Because other people are, are, have different opinions, different experiences doing this. So you, you just don't live your life by default. Mm -hmm. You know, that's good. Believe in yourself. Uh, and so I encourage you to think big, be bold and face the future with courage. Scary big ideas open the way for innovation and success. Believe in yourself, you know, because as of this talk, you know, you can find your passion and hopefully you've de you'll develop an actionable plan with goals. The future in the future begins with the first step, right? I mean, it we've got to just decide I'm going to, I don't know exactly what's next, but I am going to step into the future because the future will come. Tomorrow will come. This afternoon will come. Tonight will come. So, and things will never be perfect. So don't wait. If you're waiting for perfect, you're never going to do anything. So, you know, don't focus on how. When you're in the present, don't focus on how. You know, focus about moving forward, taking action. Because what I found is that the how will develop as you go. You'll see it. It'll, it'll begin appearing in front of you as long as you're moving forward. If you stand still, it'll never, you know, you'll never know how because you're not taking any, any action. So you just need to take the first step down the road because the path doesn't exist until you take the first step and then the mm -hmm. second step and the third step. It doesn't exist. What, yes, what you're talking about is <clears throat> basically taking that leap of faith, right? Yes, so that, exactly. That next step, it's not, it's not really there until you take it. And then the path right. opens up. So I'm not sure if I'm going to get this right or not, but <clears throat> it's either Excalibur or Indiana Jones or <laughs> yeah, one of yeah. the action-adventure movies. I remember there's this pivotal scene where, you know, uh, Sean Connery or, you know, whoever the actor was is standing and there's a chasm and they have a map to where these, this treasure is. And the map shows that, you know, he's supposed to, like, there should be a bridge, but there's not a bridge and there's no remnants of a bridge. But in faith, he takes that first step into the chasm. So our listeners may have seen this movie in the past. So I, I just love this. And it gives me a lot of inspiration and has in the past to, to take those leaps of faith, those, you know, that step. So as he puts his foot down into the chasm, a paved step appears. And then he takes a second step and the next paved step appears. And then as he's going across the chasm, you know, his path is secure as he takes the next step. So I love that visual and I love the picture that you've painted of, you know, having faith in yourself and collaborating with others and being able to let go of our, in, you know, limiting beliefs, let go of the past, let go of our story that we, we tell and we buy into and we hold on to so dearly, being able to step into the future with promise and, you know, power and courage and, you know, ultimately what we're doing is we're believing in ourselves, right? Yes. Believing in ourselves more than that, the fact that we have to carve a path. You know, it's, um, you know, as we wrap up here, Chuck, I, I, this, your topic, I've been, I just love 
I've really enjoyed being able to hear more about your book, um, There's No Future in Your Past. I've really enjoyed your thoughts, and I know they're deep thoughts that you've been chewing on and mulling over for, for years, right? And, yeah. and that you're putting pen to paper. I love that, that we have the opportunity where we sit right now in, in history to do things differently, sure. to make a difference, to learn from the past, um, to be able to, again, you know, let go of our stories that, that have, our likely stories that have held us back, to be able to step into the future, you know, with resilience um, and, and really believe in ourselves. And, you know, if we don't believe in ourselves, who, who is going to believe in us, right? That's right. Um, and, you know, I guess just in closing for me, just to, you know, this, you said one thing that really spurred, uh, got my attention and, and it reminded me that I need to be, you know, just really aware of that right now in this time in history is whatever got me to where I'm at now isn't going to serve me going forward. So that's one of the motivations for me right now in, you know, we just for Exceptional Connections created a YouTube channel and we're doing these conversations to connect and, you know, I'm learning graphic design skills and there's a lot of skills that during this time of sheltering in place that I'm acquiring that I'm confident are going to serve me going forward in the future. Yeah, and, and I think that that's right. That's right, exactly. So I, I, that's why I think the, we have to be agile and we have to be willing to adapt because yes. things are changing quickly around us and they'll yes, continue they to change. One thing that we all know is change is constant, right? Yes. It's, everything's always changing, even if it doesn't appear to change. So this is why I like the reference uh, to the library. The library is full of wonderful, wonderful things, lots of knowledge, lots of experiences, lots of stories, but it's a library. It's just a reference material, you know? So we can't, you know, we, those books are already written. So we have to have the courage to accept change and embrace it. So we have the courage to step forward, create new books, new ideas, new concepts, you know, and follow our hearts. Where do we really want to go? And listen to our intuition and our instincts. And kind of rephrase an old phrase is go boldly. We have never gone before. Because that's <laughs> where we're going. We've never, none of us have been in the future, at least to my knowledge. Maybe some people have, but Time to my knowledge. I don't know anybody who's been in the future. Mm -hmm. So we have the complete chance now to reframe what we do and what we think and move into the future and develop a whole new ideas, whole new concepts, a whole new successful future for ourselves, much bigger than it is today. Yes. Well, thank you, Chuck. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us, sharing your thoughts that I know that you've been really developing and, um, and sharing them at, at such a time as this, you know, in history. Um, very applicable and uh, really appreciate your taking the time to join us, being a part of our Exceptional Connections community so our, our listeners can can uh, experience for themselves your wisdom and um, all that you bring to our community. We just really appreciate you more than I can ever express. Um, so if anybody wants to learn more about you, um, what you have to offer, can you share that before we open it up to um, discussion with some of our listeners? Well, yeah, they can reach me at uh, my email address at, uh, Charles E. Oxford Consulting at uh, CEO at Charles E. Oxford .com. And or they can call me for 425-503-2929. And I, I will offer them, you know, a 30, 45 minute consultation on the issues that are at the top of mind today. I'd be glad to Thank do you. that for anybody. Beautiful. And then your, your website also is um, is the Charles um, E. Oxford Consulting .com. Yes. So they can check out your website as well. 
Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us again. Thank you for being part of our Exceptional Connections community. We've been wanting to have you um, join us as a, a conversation to connect guests for quite a while and so glad we were able to make that happen today. Um, so let's open it up and see if anybody has any ahas or epiphanies or wants to enter into this conversation with us. Rikshana, I see you. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I wanted to thank Chuck for um, this uh, title. It was just beautiful. There is no future in the past. What a catching title. And uh, I just want to share the lessons that really brought me some aha moment awareness is just, you know, looking at the sky and looking at the clouds like this, there is always blue sky on the other side. <laughs> In the sense, and I really, I did, you know, sometimes we get all gloomed up like, oh, it's a rainy day living in Pacific Northwest. Oh, another gloomy day. But at the end, when you look at it, yes, you know, there is blue skies beyond it. And um, whatever block that is and to see what's ahead and the impossible. So thank you for helping us reframe the way of looking at things. Um, I love the the clean slate, slate. The, the yeah, the things that we don't know what's ahead, but to be able to still show up. So I took a lot of notes. I'm going to be reviewing and lots of wisdom, lots of nuggets, yeah. lots of yeah. keys to create from. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Yes, that's a great idea, Rikshana. We'll have to create some of these um, into networking nuggets for Exceptional Connections to share with our community. So, well, thank you so much, Chuck, again, for being a part of our conversations to connect Let's Get Real. And for those of you who are listening, we have a YouTube channel. So go to Exceptional Connections and subscribe and um, click on the notifications so you get the um, reminder for the next, uh, when the next, a conversation to connect drops and we look forward to having you join us um, every Wednesday from noon to one and with a new um, a new guest every month next month we are honored uh, I think it's May 27th Molly Clip will be joining us um, so signing off from um, Mill Creek Washington thanks for joining us yeah thank, thank you for you having back. me have a great day you're welcome you too bye-bye